This video is a product buyer's guide intended for gift givers and adult collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max and Sang. Many of you have been requesting this one for a while now, so today we are finally reviewing the latest line of fashion dolls from Mattel that have the whole doll community abuzz. Barbie Extra. Designed by Barbie fashionista manager Judy Choi, the Barbie Extra series lives up to its name by featuring a collection of wildly colorful, over-the-top characters, sporting loud hairstyles and statement accessories. At face value, it offers several traits collectors have been demanding from Barbie for years now, including full articulation, more intricate layered clothing, and a level of style and detail that can appeal to more than just a child audience. But there is no denying that ever since these dolls leaked online months ago, their existence has been riddled with controversy and a whirlwind of contrasting opinions. Many have accused Barbie Extra of directly mimicking MGA's Bratz and LOL Surprise OMG in theme, taglines, and stylization. We'll dive deeper into that conversation later in this video as we have the full set of all five Barbie Extra dolls to unbox and review today. As with many recent Barbies, none of these dolls have full names, they are just listed by number. Are they worth the higher than usual price point by Barbie standards? How do they compare side by side to LOL, OMG, or Bratz? Is all this melodrama controversy valid? Let's unbox all five and find out. Each Barbie Extra doll sells for a suggested retail price of $24.99. We found doll one and two at Target, but the rest were a bit harder to track down. We had to order numbers three, four, and five at walmart.com. Links to purchase each doll online will be linked in the video description below. These dolls contain some small pieces and is not recommended for children under the age of three. Jumping straight into the packaging, each doll can be seen clearly in her plastic window display, with her number display on the upper left. We can see the Barbie Extra logo gives off an iridescent shift towards the bottom of the box, alongside artwork of the character inside. As a fun addition to the packaging, there are little containers filled with glitter confetti on the top right of each box. They differ in shape for each doll. Number one has a star, number two has a diamond, and so on. You can easily remove and reattach them, as the back is covered in an adhesive just like a sticker. The left sides of the boxes once again show artwork of the characters and the Barbie Extra logo, while the right side displays her pet companion. The back of the box gives us a better look at each character's full-size illustration and details accessories that we can find inside. Let's unbox them and take a closer look. Starting off, here we have Barbie Extra Doll number one, fully unboxed. Sporting the darkest skin tone of the collection, her makeup really pops. She has shimmery gold eyeshadow around each eye, topped off with a bright red lipstick. Her hair has tones of both black and brunette, tied into long thin braids along either side of her forehead. The back of her hair is tied into two large afro puffs at each side of her head. Her first accessories are two large golden hoop earrings, which unfortunately seem like they can be partially pulled out, but not fully removed, which is kind of odd. The fashions are extra from the get-go, with number one wearing a thick faux fur jacket in a rainbow of colors. If you open it up, you can see it's lined in a soft yellow fabric. Beneath the jacket is a two-piece form-fitting tracksuit in bold red that definitely gives some Calvin Klein vibes. The bust and waistbands are black elastic, with the word love inscribed across several times. At her neck, she wears a gold chain necklace. On her feet are a pair of white socks lined in black with glittery silver boots. It does appear as though there is some slight discoloration on her legs, unfortunately. This is exactly where the plastic straps were in the packaging. 
She comes with a few other accessories, including an oversized faux gem ring that goes over four fingers and a pair of sunglasses that say shine bright in bold letters on top. She can also carry a cloud-shaped white clutch. One of the recurring themes in Barbie Extra Dolls are their loudly stylized pet companions. Number one comes with a tan-colored poodle decked out in multicolored bows, star-shaped sunglasses, and pink high heels. She also comes with a miniature blue purse of her own that actually opens. You can store her other little pink accessories inside. These are very tiny and easy to lose. I thought they were little bows to swap on her, but it looks like they're just little dog treat accessories. Moving on to doll number two, this next character sports what seems to be an ambiguously Asian features and skin tone. Her eyeshadow is cut into multiple colors, including off-white, pink, and lavender. The bottom lids is lined in teal. Her lips are a peachy nude color. This doll wears a yellow neon fabric beanie on her head, which you can remove after cutting the plastic ties underneath. Her straight hair is half sugar pink and half lavender, combined with strands of tinsel. It's extremely long, reaching past her knees. Her statement earrings are shaped like iridescent blue crystals. Number two's outfit starts with a powder blue cloud print top with puff sleeves extending to her elbows. Over the top, she wears an iridescent metallic fabric dress with a plunging neckline, crease into ruffles past the waist. The doll wears a whopping five necklaces total, including a choker that reads dream, simple faux pearls, and a cluster of chunky faux gems at the bottom. Beneath that top trio is another two silver pendants. These would really pop a bit more if they had some paint detailing. At her right wrist is a faux purple scrunchie paired with a white faux pearl bracelet on the left. White fishnake leggings cover the doll's legs, and she wears simple white sneakers on her feet. Her final two accessories are a neon green gem-shaped purse and metallic silver shades. Number two's pet is a shaggy white dog with a bedazzled silver collar reading boss. The collar dangles a bit. And interestingly, you can see underneath that the doll figure is hollow inside. Barbie Extra Doll number three features probably the most familiar face sculpt, one we've seen several times in modern fashionistas and other Barbie lines. Her makeup is a bit simpler than the other girls with a pale pink eyeshadow and a light beige lipstick. As for how she plays into the eye pixelation, <laughs> conversation, we'll revisit that a little bit later. Number three's crimped hair is mostly a sunny blonde with streaks of cotton candy pink down the sides and back. There are two sections parted off down the sides of her face and a pair of small buns tied above her head. Each side is also sectioned off with simple white hair clips and we see silver hoop earrings attached to her ears. Number three's outfit starts with a metallic silver tank top beneath a dramatic shaggy faux fur jacket colored in rosy pink. It's actually quite soft to the touch. Like number two, number three wears three different necklaces, including a sculpted chain, stars, and the Barbie logo. Her powdery blue pants are decorated in white stars and have a nice ruffled trim at the sides. She wears pure white boots with very cute wing-shaped attachments at either side. An adorable gummy bear-shaped ring goes around her fingers. It's still very cute, but I do have to say I wish it was as striking as the one we see in the promos. Her purse accessory is shaped like a wrapped yellow candy and reads sweet. She can also wear a pair of solid color sunglasses lined in white dots. Doll 3's pet is a pink little piggy styled like a unicorn, wearing a flower crown and horn on her head with little wings on her back. She comes with a puffy white cloud to stand on. These pieces are all loose, so once you take it out of the packaging, be careful with it because it can all fall apart. 
This pet in particular might look especially familiar to Bratz fans, but we'll revisit that later. Up next is doll number four. This character sports a pretty unique face and hairstyle, and her forehead and cheeks are dusted in freckles, and beneath her hazel eyes is a warm smile topped off with peachy pink lipstick. Her puffy curly hair is colored sky blue and is tied into a top knot above her head. It seems to transition from a light to dark blue across the back. Unfortunately, it seems rooted pretty thinly. We can see some bald spots once we move the hair around at the sides. Her dramatic silver earrings paired together reads girl power. Her tie-dye t-shirt makes a different impression in person compared to the promos. If you look closely, you'll see shimmery micro sequins dotted across that sparkle as you tilt the doll left to right. The shirt has a fabric sewn collar. It can easily be missed under the collar, but she wears a yellow choker around her neck. Over her shirt, she wears a puffy navy blue jersey jacket with a crisscross lace print along the sleeves. Opening it up, we can see a very soft bright orange lime interior. The jacket is a mixed material with a soft fabric at the sleeves and collar. You see a large white zipper down the center, and shockingly, it actually functions. You can really zip the jacket open and close, something we almost never see in Playline dolls. Her pants are pure white shorts hem with a slight fringe detailing. They have functioning pockets at each side. The doll's hands fit perfectly inside. Her shoes are neon yellow sculpted sneakers. Number four's accessories include a pink wristwatch, metallic sunglasses, neon yellow fanny pack, and a matching yellow headphones that are a bit tough to fit over her hairstyle. She also includes a large black skateboard that reads Malibu in colorful stylized graffiti. The skateboard has functioning pink wheels and is large enough for the doll to actually ride it. Her pets are two smiling white kitties with yellow crowns atop their heads. They look pretty adorable on top of her skateboard. For our finale, we have the doll I'm maybe most excited about and seemingly one of the toughest to track down in stores right now, number five. She wears a tan eyeshadow above her warm brown eyes as well as a light magenta lipstick. We have to talk about this doll's hair, y'all. Rainbow hair has been done on dolls plenty of times before, but I'm not personally quite sure I've seen this particular color palette in combination with such intricate styling. You can see on the back of her head there are separated sections of pink, lavender, blue, yellow, and a minty green styled into thick braids on either side of her head. I love how the colors intertwine on the braids as it trails down. Those pops of mint really add some sparkle to this rainbow. There are chunky gold statement earrings on her ears. This doll is defined not only by her rainbow hair, but also her vivacious long-sleeved jean jacket. Orange and pink flames decorate the full hemline all across the back. There are faux pockets at the sides, and very notably, long strands of fringe all down each sleeve. They look very cool, but have an almost sandpapery texture to them. Beneath the jacket, she wears a white tank top with graffiti stylization of the word love. The trend of three necklaces continues, this time being white and gold chokers paired with a longer gold pendant. Her pants are faux denim shorts, once again sporting functioning pockets. So we wouldn't recommend trying to put anything inside these pockets because once you put anything through, it'll fall right out. There's not actually a pocket pouch inside. Her tan colored boots are accentuated with a ColourPop pair of neon yellow socks. For the accessories, the doll can carry a translucent purse decorated with a stylized cell phone and diamond by the handle. Like the other dolls, she includes a pair of sunglasses as well. Her pet is a wide-eyed dog with a pink collar and he comes with an adorable miniature vehicle to ride around in with functioning wheels. This accessory seems styled pretty similarly to the life-size Barbie cruisers and off-road vehicles I've seen in the past. 
there's a bit more to talk about before we wrap up. It would have been great to see these dolls in ultra posable made to move body sculpts, but unfortunately they don't quite have that level of articulation. They are however much more movable than your average modern Barbie. You can bend these dolls at the head, shoulders, elbows, wrists, thighs, and knees, making for a total of 11 articulation points on the Barbie Extra. They also sport different body types throughout the line. Dolls number two and four have the curvy Barbie body sculpt, which could make their clothing easier to mix and match with fellow curvy Barbies. And lastly, of course, we have to address the controversy surrounding Barbie Extra. For one, doll collectors have been voicing concerns over Barbie's printed eye pixelation in recent releases, making for blurry or unclean faces. Has it improved for Barbie Extra? The answer is sort of. It actually varies a bit by doll. Barbie Extra number three in particular does have somewhat noticeable pixelation in her eyes and lips. But the other girls don't share the same issues and it seems to have a much cleaner face paint than your average recent Barbie fashionista. And finally, of course, the drama involving MGA comparisons. Are these dolls really that similar to LOL OMGs or Bratz? Let's take a closer look and find out. Many collectors accused Barbie Extra Doll Number 2 of sporting overly similar fashions and color palette to LOL Surprise OMG Series 2's Candylicious, who also had pink pastel hair, a metallic iridescent dress, and puffed blue sleeves. I definitely do see similarities looking at them side by side, but technically speaking, both of these dolls seem to borrow from internationally popular fashion trends like Japanese Harajuku pastels and iridescent skirts. A more egregious offense might be pairing a girly pink blonde character with a winged pig pet which Bratz fans may immediately associate with Chloe's pet pig. In the 2015 Instapets release, which we also reviewed on this channel, Chloe came paired with a pet figure that does seem pretty similar to the one we see with doll number three here. They're even both winking and both seem to have cutesy anime stylization. You could just as easily argue, however, that the when pigs fly phrase belongs to no one and has been public domain for many years. The controversy didn't stop there as Barbie recently released a music video titled Barbie Extra Oh My Wow on YouTube, which MGA fans were quick to compare to LOL Surprise's very popular extra like OMG music video. Now, in summary, do I think it's possible Barbie Extra borrowed some inspiration from LOL Surprise and may have intentionally positioned itself to compete directly with that brand? In short, yes, I believe it's possible. But that being said, I think we'd be lying to ourselves if we can't admit that Mattel and MGA both have been borrowing concepts from each other for several years now. Copycat competition exists in virtually every industry, and given that many collectors have been explicitly asking Mattel to come up with something modern and flashy to properly compete with MGA, it's hard to totally knock them for these decisions. In my opinion, anyway. <laughs> Feel free to share your thoughts on this Dolly melodrama in the comments below. We're curious what you guys think. From there, we can wrap up with final thoughts. Whether you love Barbie Extra or you don't, Mattel has another product that has accomplished the goal of getting consumers interested in checking out the Barbie brand again. Since its initial reveal, fans and collectors have been talking about Barbie's new fashion style with more outrageous and bright and colorful clothing. While I have to say in terms of colorful and daring fashion and their execution, I have enjoyed BMR 1959 more than Barbie Extra. There's perceived value here, more articulated bodies in more layered clothing with an additional toy pet to go along with the doll. But it's hard to argue upon closer inspection that there's a lot lacking or corners cut with this product. At a more luxe playline price, we shouldn't really be expected to be okay with pixelation on their faces. Whether this new application method from Mattel is used to save costs or streamline production, 
it makes their doll look cheaper than what their competitions are doing. It's hard for me to see where the $25 went into, but individually, each piece on Barbie Extra seemed cheaply made. The accessories and shoes are molded plastic with no additional paint applied, giving off a rather budget cheap feel. I personally prefer extra clothing than a pet toy. Their pets seems to be tacked on and does not offer any real value to the product. I'm happy to see healthy competition in the toy aisles, which means we the consumer gets better products, but Barbie Extra missed the mark for me personally. I can see a parent or a fan picking up Barbie Extra for the Barbie brand alone over the more daring and edgier competitor dolls. It's hard for me to recommend this right now at its full asking price of $24.99. Wait for a sale if you are curious about Barbie Extra yourself. Despite the hotly debated over issues surrounding them, I have to honestly say I don't think I've been this intrigued by a themed Barbie collection since 2017's Video Game Hero. Barbie took a risk with these on multiple levels, and whether or not everyone loves it or can say it was executed perfectly, I think it's a step in the right direction. These dolls do offer a few things older Mattel fans may feel like they've lost out on since the likes of Monster High and Ever After High, including greater articulation, flashier fashions, and a clearer, more modern theme. Truthfully speaking, however, I think there's probably still a ways to go before the Mattel cynics out there can be fully won back over. My suspicion is the $25 price point will still be seen as a turnoff to folks out buying Rainbow High dolls for just a dollar or so more, in part because I think there's a bit of a disconnect between manufacturer cost and perceived value on the consumer end. You guys can let us know in the comments whether you value additional accessories or fashions more in a doll purchase, but the choice to add these little pet figures instead of secondary clothing options I think will be polarizing for collectors. The pets are mostly super cute. I actually love how they look, but I don't totally see how they're cohesive with this theme. Ultimately, it seems to come back down to Barbie's present time focus, which seems to be younger children. And honestly, I do think Barbie Extra will be a big hit with kids. They're stylish and fun, but overall sweeter and more wholesome than LOL Surprise OMGs. Parents and younger doll fans are likely to eat these up through the holiday season, but I imagine older collectors may be a little more split on their appeal. They've definitely got diversity nailed down, featuring a beautiful spectrum of skin tones and hair textures, so personally I'd like to see this line continue and maybe form a fuller identity of its own in Wave 2. My top favorites would probably have to be Dolls 2 and 5. I love how cute and colorful they are and I think they'd be a ton of fun to redress. Was Barbie extra too much for you? Or maybe not enough? Definitely sound off and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't, and check out our full Barbie playlist for even more reviews. And we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.